Hey everyone, Salt Goblin here to talk to you about Helldivers 2. Should you play Helldivers 2 as a filthy casual? At the time of writing this, Helldivers 2 has been out for more than a month and I've played over 100 hours of the game and finished a few missions at the highest level, difficulty 9. So I think it makes it fair for me to give my take on the game as a filthy casual. Just to make it clear, this video is not a review of the game. Rather, as I suggested in the title, it's to let you know, a filthy casual, if it's too late to buy the game and enjoy it, six weeks after release or six Seven, depending on when this video actually comes out. Short answer, no, it's not too late to buy this game and enjoy it. There you go. If you're busy or have ADHD and this is your max focus time, you can move on to other things. But if you have a few minutes to spare or need more info, I'll try my best to inform you on the state of the game uh, based on my perspective. We're going to tackle a few points next. So first, will I enjoy this game if I play casually? Second, can I play this game without friends? Third, is the player base toxic? Fourth and last point, is it grindy? Okay, first point, will I enjoy the game if I play casually? I want to say that I, I consider myself a casual player, but let's be real, with at least 25 hours a week on Helldivers 2 for the whole uh, month, first month of release, I'm probably playing at least 10 more hours weekly than what an actual casual player uh, can put in. So keep that in mind uh, when you think about my take. So to answer the question, yes, I think this game is great for casuals. For live service games, we casuals or people with ADHD who can't commit to a single game for months and years on end, we often feel like we won't be able to compete with other players. And there's also the added fear that after the initial release period, these types of games either fall off or become very competitive, at least for the player base that stays on the game. Well, since there's no PvP in Helldivers 2, even if you join later, you'll still be able to enjoy the game. Another point is I played a bit on the first day of April and despite me being over level 40, I decided to go for a difficulty 4 mission and I was joined up by three very different random players. Uh, when I, we started the mission. One was level 7, one was 23, and one was 32. This shows to me that there are still new players joining in, and that some players are taking it slowly instead of sweaty. For this squad, we all had a very different style of gameplay, which was refreshing. Too often with online games, the meta becomes the rule, and any sort of diversity is lost very quickly. I hate the meta. Still on the topic of is this game for casuals, there are nine levels of difficulty available for you and you're under no pressure at any given time to play at the highest difficulty. So I myself have only played a level nine a handful of times as I've uh, stated at the beginning of the video. Since this is a PvE co-op game, being a casual can also make us ask ourselves this. If we join too late, will we be able to find players at our level to group with? This brings me to my next point. Second, can I play this game without friends? Arrowhead, so clever, hmm? Let's make a game so hard that people will have to convince three friends to buy it with them. That way we'll sell the game four times at once. Cackle, cackle, cackle. Well, again, Short answer is yes, you can play without friends, but it's much more fun with buddies, your online buddies or your real life buddies. The fact that on April 1st, almost two months after release, which was February 8th, according to uh, Google, the fact that I played a difficulty four and my squad was instantly filled with randos is a great sign that you don't need IRL friends to buy this game with you to, able, to be able to enjoy it. High level players don't only want to play at difficulty uh, 7 to 9 it seems. Hell, I even enjoy joining random games at lower difficulties and sharing my equipment with new players. If you have a microphone, you can also find many friendly players that way, just chatting with the in-game voice chat. I've played maybe, I wanna say half that playtime with randos, not with my, my IRL friends. And another thing we usually have to worry about is the general toxicity of the player base, which brings me to my third point. Third, is the player base toxic? I remember when I tried Retail WoW during COVID, 
I had made a, an orc tank and I had a lot of trouble finishing dungeons or whatever they're called in stances because people kept leaving my group since I didn't know what I was doing because I was brand new to the game and I didn't want to watch guides, I wanted to play the game. And sometimes what they said in the chat as a farewell wasn't very nice, but in my close to 110 hours of gameplay on Helldivers 2, I only met toxic players twice. Both times it was the same thing. They killed the entire squad besides themselves right at the end of extraction and extracted alone. Now that doesn't really impact your gameplay since according to the game guides if the mission is successful the only thing you lose when you don't extract is your samples and the psycho serial killers that did that to me collected the drop samples each time anyways. So besides that weird feeling uh, of, of cheap getting shot in the back at the end of the game, it didn't have, uh, a, at the end of the mission, it didn't have that much impact. Anyways, I just blocked these two players and I moved on. Fourth and last point, is Helldivers 2 grindy? I'd say that it can be a bit grindy, but I'm the only player in my pool of 8th that actually grinded to unlock stuff. The game has many currencies. There's an experience system for your character, which unlocks access to different stratagems, which are mostly weapons and tools like orbital strikes or the jetpack. To buy these weapons and tools, you'll need requisition slips. It's just cash with a fancy name. These requisition slips are accumulated by doing missions. You can also find them in missions like on a drop. More difficult missions yield more rewards as usual. I unlocked everything I could that could... I don't know how to say the sentence. Everything that could be unlocked with by spending requisition slips. Here we go. I unlocked within maybe the first 60 hours. The devs keep adding to the game, however, so even if my slips are maxed out, I still have stuff to do with them from time to time, like the two new weapons they drop. Third currency, the medals, which let you unlock armor, grenades, guns, abilities, and super credits, which is the fourth currency. You unlock all that stuff by spending medals through a sort of free battle pass a, or progression system called uh, war bonds. You get these medals the same way you get Requisition slips by completing missions and finding loot on maps in during missions. Medals are also used in premium war bonds. At first, players thought that these premium war bombs would expire over time, but the devs have confirmed that they are here to stay. Again, good thing, Arrowhead. You're awesome. Uh, that sounded sarcastic, but no, actually, I really appreciate that. It's very cool. These premium war bonds have to first be unlocked with the third or fourth, I think, I think it's fourth currency, super credits. Is that fifth? These super credits are one of the only two other things you might want to grind for or farm from my experience, besides samples. You need 1,000 of these super credits to unlock a premium war bond, and you can find a maximum of 40 on each mission if you're lucky. I use the guns I unlocked with the premium war bonds, but I wouldn't say they're better than other guns. They mostly add more debt, more variety to the gameplay. They're not necessarily the best guns, best armor you can buy. The last sort of currency that I can think of is that six, five or six are samples and there are three types of samples. There's common, they're green, rare, or orange, and super, the pink samples. These samples are used to upgrade your ship itself which give you various juicy bonuses in game, which are good enough to give you a strong motivation to try your best to collect them while fighting for your fucking life. I mean, for while spreading democracy. The catch is that not only do these samples have various rarities, meaning there's much more green samples per map than orange or pink, but if you want the rarest ones, you'll have to play at the higher difficulties, 7, 8, or 9. At the moment, I haven't unlocked everything in the game, but I'm very happy with the options available to me. There's almost too many options of guns and equipment and stratagems. Uh, some stuff seem much better than other things, so maybe half the stratagems and guns available to you in the game seem redundant after a while, because you kind of settle into your, uh, your patterns and what you're comfortable with, but balance patches are coming to always play with that. And personally, I like to try different things. I made a uh, sniper, anti-material, and 
and jetpack build that was really really fun to play when I was playing with my three other friends and I haven't seen anybody else try that but it worked really well. These days I'm playing on level 4 or 5 uh, because for my last ship upgrade I need a good amount of rare orange samples so I don't need to go sweat at level 7 to get them but if I did I'd probably find more of them. So this is the reward system in the game which I think is very well balanced. Okay the real last point. For me I find motivation in trying to find everything in the game, unlock everything in the game, have everything in the game. I also enjoy helping friends level up, so I'll probably reduce my playtime from now on, because 110, let's say, hours is a lot of, of gaming for me on a single game, and I want this channel to be like variety gaming. But I still log in once or twice a week just to grind and, and help my buddies. But the other major reason to keep playing see what I did there, are major orders. Helldivers 2 actually has a game master a la Dungeons and & Dragons and several times a week we are issued goals, missions, major orders to complete. These have often introduced new mechanics to the game, even new enemies, and add an evolving storyline factor to the game. On top of that, if these major orders are completed, you get a huge amount of medals, helping you get the more grindy warbound item you've been saving for, like 45-50 medals. That's very nice to receive when you just log in. These major orders require the whole player base to coordinate, however, and I fear that in the near future, as people lose interest in the game, these major orders will not be completed, frustrating players and leading more and more players to quit. So I'm curious about how the devs are going to handle that and how these major orders are going to play out in the coming months if, if people still play in the coming months. Well, that video got much longer than I anticipated and I want to go play a little bit, so I'll end it here. Uh, to resume, yes, big yes, it's not too late to buy this game and you can absolutely enjoy it as a filthy casual. I believe that Helldivers 2 is great for casuals and latecomers alike, even at full price, which is $50 here in Canada. So thanks for watching everyone. If you want to help support the channel, you already did the best thing you could, which was to watch this video to the end. If you want to do your part, you can also like the video and leave a comment. Those help the algo a lot, actually. And finally, if I don't annoy you too much, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I talk mostly about video games. I also stream on Twitch under the name Salt Goblinoid, usually on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, link in the description below. So if you follow on Twitch and activate your notifications, you'll know when I go live. I also post when I go live, usually on my Instagram the day of, just as a reminder with the link. My Instagram is also in the description below. With this, Salt Goblin signing out and dropping in to help spread democracy! Oh my god! <laughs> nice, 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 nice! Did you get him? Yep! Sick! <sighs> Bye, all Titan! Oh my god! Oh no! I have three samples, I just got crushed. I got your samples. Yeah, just extract without me, guys. No, no, they are good. I'm in. I'm in. Alright, yeah, Roger. Extraction complete. Good job, good job. Oh, and we got some pink. Pink samples. Jesus. Nice. There. I just need 50 more pink. <laughs> 50? Hey, Jesus, no. indeed. Okay, it's not just me that completely stops breathing, huh? Nope. Yeah, me too. I just. I was turning <laughs> blue. <laughs>